So here's another way of solving linear systems. And there's just an additional step that has to be taken. Otherwise, we're going to use the elimination method that we did when we solved linear systems by adding and subtracting. And that's just all about eliminating one of the variables. So let's look here and see what we need to do. We have two equations, 6x plus 5y is equal to 19, and 2x plus 3y is equal to 5. And if you notice, there, there's no variable that has a coefficient that either matches up or is the opposite of it. So there's uh, for 6x, it's not negative 6x underneath or, or 6x. So I can't use the addition and subtraction method right off the bat. So what I have to do is I have to adjust it a little bit. I'm still going to use the addition and subtraction method in a moment, though. So what I'm going to do is I have to change this equation a bit. I'm going to change it by multiplying it all by 3. When I multiply the whole thing by 3, suddenly you're going to see what happens here. The top one is going to remain all the same still, so it's still going to be 6x plus 5y is equal to 19. The bottom one, though, is going to be changed. And the bottom one, when it changes, it's going to be now 3 times 2x, that's going to be 6x. Uh, and 3 times 3y is going to be 9y. And 3 times 5 is going to be 15. And now I've got that situation where I have a variable with a coefficient that either is the opposite or the same. So I can now use the method of, of uh, using subtraction or addition. In this case, it's going to be subtraction because they have the same coefficient. So I'm going to subtract this whole thing from the top there. They're nice and lined up. 6x minus 6x is going to be 0x. 5 minus 9y is going to be 4y. 19 minus 15 is going to be neg is going to be actually just positive 4. Divide both by negative 4, you end up with a y is equal to negative 1. I'm going to plug that in to this equation up here. When I do, I end up with 6x plus 5 times negative 1 is equal to 19. So 6x uh, plus negative 5 is equal to 19. Add 5 to both sides, you get 6x is equal to 24. And then divide both sides by 6, you get x is equal to 4. So I believe I've got my point. My point that I believe is true is going to be 4 negative 1. But I've got to check it in to this equation as well. So let's see if that works. So 2 x is now 4 plus 3 y is now negative 1 is equal to 5. So this is going to be 6 plus negative 3 is equal to, or sorry, 8 plus negative 3 is going to be equal to 5. So 8 uh, plus negative 3 is equal to 5, and that's a true statement. So this is true for both of the equations. So it's the solution for both. So in this equation, or so system of equations, I'm still trying to find the solution for both of them. So I got 3x minus 2y is equal to 3, and negative x plus y is equal to 1. And so I got a, a situation where I'm trying to figure out which one I want to get rid of. Do I want to get rid of my y's or my x's? And in this case here, I'm just going to get rid of my x's. If I get rid of my x's, I'm going to go ahead and multiply this whole thing by 3. Top thing stays the same. I didn't multiply it by anything. Bottom thing now changes to negative 3x. It's 3 times uh, negative x plus 3y is equal to 3. Okay, so great. Now I'm just going to solve this quickly. Uh, I'm going to use addition this time. Add these two together because my 3 and my negative 3 uh, cancel each other out. And what I'm just left with is I'm left with y is equal to 6. Plug that into the addition uh, into the other equation. You're going to get your answer or the first equation here: three x 
minus 2 times 6. I'm plugging it into this one here. It's equal to 3. 3 x minus 12 is equal to 3. 3 x is equal to uh, 15. So x is going to be equal to 5. So that's going to be my point. My point is going to be 5, 6. Plug it into this point right here, or this one right here. It's going to be negative 5 plus 6, because neg uh, 5, negative 5, and then 6 for that is equal to 1. That's true for both of them. So that is going to be our solution. So once you get to setting it up, then you just have to maneuver it, um, set it up by multiplying it out. You then can go ahead and use the addition subtraction method. So this will be the last example. And in this case here, there's nothing that matches up really quickly because I can't multiply one of the equations and have, um, if I multiplied 9 by anything, I wouldn't end up with 6. And if I multiplied 2 by anything, I wouldn't end up with 13. And the reverse is true also. So what I need to do is I actually need to multiply both equations by something. So I end up having something that will cancel out. So what I mean by that is this, is if I take this top equation, let's say I decide I want to get rid of my y values. What I'm going to multiply the top thing by is, I'm going to multiply the top thing by 13. And I'm doing that because if I multiply it by 13, you're going to end up seeing what will happen. So that's the top when I multiply every, every term of it by 13. The bottom, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the bottom by 2. And then what I'm going to end up with is I'm going to end up with 12x plus 26y is equal to negative 18. And then I've got my matching term here that I can then subtract out. So let's see what we're going to do here. I'm going to use subtraction because that will allow me to cancel it out. Well, I'll be left with this. I'll be left with 105x is equal to 525. Um, and then I'm going to divide both sides by 105, and x will be then equal to 5. I can then plug that into either of the two equations up there. If I plug it in, it's going to be 9 times 5 plus 2y is equal to 39. 45 plus 2y is equal to 39. Subtract 45 from both sides. 2y is equal to negative 6. y is going to be equal to negative 3. So I believe my point is going to be 5, negative 3. So now I just got to plug it into the second equation here and see if I'm right. 6 times 5 for that plus 13 times negative 3 for that is equal to negative 9. So 30 plus negative 39 is equal to negative 9. That's true. So for both of them, it's true. So that's my answer, and I'm done. So just when you can't match it up, there's always going to be a way of changing both equations to make it so you can match it up. Now, it's a little bit more complicated, but really it's just building on those steps.